Hello everyone, welcome to Ethoma 16. On our today's lesson, I'm going to explain how we are going to just describe this problem. Is that on this problem, there is three different kind of equations. And the first question is going to be how to find the inverse of the function. And the second question, how to describe the second algebraic expression in terms of the first. And the third, now the, first, the third problem is, is as describe how to solve this problem is that so if you are a new member of my youtube channel don't forget to share like and subscribe it's almost 16. well now let's come to how we are going to find the solution of this problem now let's see the first problem what is the inverse of this function how could you find the inverse of this function for x greater or equal to two so before you have to find the inverse of any function. First of all, what you have been done, what you're going to do, what you're going to explain. Can we say that every function is inversible? That's the first question. That you have to think about the, the function that you already given, is that? So can we say that this is inversible? An arbitrary function is inversible if it is one to one, is that? A function that is one to one is always inversible. But how we are going to check whether it is one to one or not? In order to check that this function is one to one or not, now we have to look the minimum value for the restricted domain or the minimum value for the domain that is given should be equal to or should be uh, just exactly one of the order pair of the, the vertex of this quadratic problem. Now the vertex of the turning point of this problem is given by minus b over 2a comma 4ac minus b square over 4a. That's, this is the vertex of the quadratic function. So this to be invertible, the minimum value for x should be equal to minus b over 2a. So in order to calculate this one, Minus b from e here is negative 4, negative 4, negative 4, negative into negative 4 over 2 times a is already 1. That's gonna be 4 over 2, which is exactly 2. So, and hence it is invertible, is that? So, it is invertible. If it is an invertible function, how we are going to find the inverse of this function? So, in order to find the inverse of any function, the first step has to be you have to just change these. In the form of this one, it is given by y is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 3. So this is the first step, is that? So this is the first step that helps us to find the inverse of the function. Now, how we are going to find the inverse of the function after this? We have to switch the position of the variables, is that? So in the second step, Let's switch the place position of x and y. And it is going to be x is going to be y squared minus 4y plus 3. This is the second set, is that? And then we have to describe, finally, we have to describe y in terms of x and other parameters. We have to write y alone in terms of x and some other parameters, is that? So this is the third or the second step. In order to find the inverse of this problem. So how could you just describe y in terms of x and other parameters? And this is gonna be, and this is perfectly given by y squared minus 4y plus 3 minus x, which is going to be zero, is that? So this is the way in order to describe y in terms of x and some other parameter, we have to describe this way, is that? So this is a way. And then now with the help of the quadratic formula. Now here a is already one and b is already minus four and c is exactly three minus a, is that? So with the help of the quadratic formula or the general formula that helps us to find the solution of any quadratic problem, we have to describe y in terms of x and some other parameter, is that? So this is gonna be y is given by minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, that, so this is the way. So what does b mean? What is going to be, what does b mean? 
This is already negative 4. Negative by negative is 4. So 4 plus or minus square of minus b square mean minus b is the whole square mean which is already 16. Is that? Minus 4 times a is already 1 times c is that is 3 minus a. Is that? Over what? Over perfectly 2. Because a is already what? A is already 1. So this is the way how to find or how to describe why in terms of x and some other parameters. And hence, now look, and hence in general, this is given by y will be 4 plus or minus square root of 16 minus, what does this mean? Minus 4 times 3 will be minus 12, minus 4 times minus x will be plus 4x, is that? And over 2, and this is exactly y will be 4 plus or minus square root of this minus this will be 4, 4 plus 4x over, over 2. And then finally, and then, this is given by, this is given by, now this is perfectly given as y is going to be 4 plus or minus square root of 4 can be taken as common. So 1 plus x over 2, is that? So you know that with the law of radical, now it is going to be 4 plus or minus 4 can be taken out from the radical because it's multiplication and this is hence, this is given by 2 square root of x plus 1 over 2, is that? And this is perfectly, 2 will be cancelled out and that is going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of x plus 1, is that? And finally, the value for y will be y will be 2 plus square root of x plus 1 or y will be 2 minus square root of x plus 1. Is that? So which will be the inverse of this function under the domain x greater than 1? Is that? As you know, the domain of this function is perfectly x greater than 2. This is the domain of this function. For the domain x greater than 2, which will be the inverse of this function? Is that? Which will be the inverse of this function? The domain for that should be the range of this problem. And the range of that problem will be the domain of this one. Is that? So the domain now and the range will be domain of that will be domain of f will be range of f inverse and domain of f inverse will be range of f. Is that? So this is the important relation. So which could be the inverse of this problem? The inverse of the function is gonna be either this or this one. Is that so? And hence, now therefore, it is given by f inverse of the function is gonna be two plus square root of x plus one all f inverse of x is gonna be two minus square root of x plus one. Is that so? This will be the inverse of the function. Is that either this one or this one will be the inverse of this function, but for x greater than or equal to two which will be the inverse. So you have to identify which is going to be the inverse of this function. Now this is a homework for you. So after you have already decided which will be the inverse of this problem, you can put your comment under the comment, the under, under the comment box, is that? Please don't forget to try to put, to just put your comment about the comment box, is that? Don't forget which will be the inverse of this one. Is this the inverse of this one on this domain or this one is the inverse of this under this domain restriction? Is that? You have to answer this problem. Is that? Please try to put your answer which will be the inverse of this problem. But generally, this is the way how to find the inverse of this problem. Thank you. Let's come to the second problem. So, when you come to the second problem, when you come to the second problem, a second problem is given simply, now it is given that now you have already given, given that 9 raised to a is going to be 25. Then you are asked to find what is the value or how we are going to describe 1 over 3 raised to a in general. Is that how we are going to describe this in terms of the first scale? Is that? So that's the way. Let's see. Now, in order to describe this one, first of all, what does this in general mean? Is that? 9 raised a mean 3 square a, that's going to be 25. 
and three raised a is going to be square root of that is plus or minus 25 is that so this is three raised a will be plus or minus square root of square root of this one is that because you know that let me explain again this one this is exactly three raised a the whole square sorry this is given by this is given by this way this is written as 3 raised a the whole square that's already 25 and 3 raised a is going to be plus or minus square root of 25 3 raised a is going to be what only 5 what's the reason because as you know for any real number a 3 raised a never be negative is that so we have to select the positive one so this 3 raised a is going to be 5 so how we are going to describe this one? Let me, let, me, let me come to a solution of this one. Now, look at the final solution. 1 over 3, the whole A, raised A mean this is 3 raised minus 1, the whole A. That. And this is going to be 3 raised A, the whole what? Minus 1. So what is 3 raised A from the given information? Is that? This is going to be 5. So 5 raised to one, negative 1, which is going to be 1 over 5. And hence this implies that 1 over 3, the raised A is going to be 1 over 5. Is that? So this is, this is equal to this one. So based on the given information, based on the above case, if this is this one, so 1 over 3 raised A will be 1 over 5. Is that? So this is the, poem, the, the, the first uh, way in order to determine this one. I think generally, in the case of this problem, this is an assumption. If this is this one, what will be the body for this? So you have to do this. This is a mathematical, a mathematical trick, trick questions. Is that mathematical trick questions, which is going to be sometimes viral mathematical questions. So very important problem. This will enhance your thinking ability. Now let's come to the next problem. So finally, let's come to how we are going to do the last problem. Is that how we are going to solve? The next problem. So, in order to find or solve this one, a square root of 8 plus a square root of 15 raised n is going to be 98. Is that? So, how could you solve this problem? What will be the value for n? Is that? How we are going to determine the value of n? You have to be careful about this one. How do you do? Can you solve this problem? Let me give you something. Well, now let, let, let's come to how we are going to find solution of this one. As you know, this is perfectly two radical of two radical of two plus this is exactly five radical of two. The whole and that is going to be you know that this is given by what? This is given by two times forty nine. Is that? And similarly, you, we can add this for them because they have the same radical. Is that? Now they have the same radical and they have the same index, then we can directly add this one, and that is going to be 7 radical of 2, is that? Raised n, that is going to be 2 times 7 square, is that? And you know that this mean with the law of exponent, as you know, a b is the whole n mean what? You can look, I have done similar problems with the help of this one in my previous video. A raised n times b raised n is that so similarly it is going to be 7 raised n times 2 raised 1 over 2 the whole n and that is going to be 2 raised 1 times 7 raised 2 and this is going to be 7 raised n times 2 raised n over 2 that's going to be 2 raised 1 times 7 square is that so how we are going to look or how we are going to say whether these two the left and the right expressions are the same. So there is, look here. Now there is two here and there is two here. There is seven and there is seven. Is that? So how we are going to say these algebraic expressions are the same? As I have already explained before, in my previous video, I have already shown similar problems. Is that? Similar amusing exponential equation I have solved it is that so with the help of this one now two different algebraic expression to be equal 
both the right and the left having the same base has to be the same. So this implies that 7 raised n should be 7 square n, 2 raised n over 2 should be 2 raised 1 in order to say these and these expressions are the same. That to say this one and this one are the same, now the two, these several days and these and this one has to be the same. And from here you can say that n is already two. Again, from here you can say that n over two should be one with the law of exponent or with the law of exponential. Now this is gonna be again n is two. That the value for n is perfectly two. That so if n is exactly two, now this plus this will be this one. That this is over. Thank you for watching.